uh, reaction to the bank's stress test. Let's bring in Tom Michaud. He's the CEO of KBW, a Stiefel company. Uh, Tom, welcome. Good to have you with us. Was there anything in these stress tests uh, um, th that, that surprised you? Or did it pretty much go the way you expected? Pretty good results oh. here. Yeah, I would say, first of all, it speaks to the soundness of the industry. In the first page of the report, they give a, a, a multi-year track record of the capital ratios for the banks. And you can see that the banks have done an incredible job of building capital over the last decade. So I think that the first piece of news is, is that there is no worry from the credit quality adverse selection uh, basis. What we did see is that the Fed had a little bit of more cautious view of what the earnings of these banks would be in an adverse scenario. And like uh, Leslie just said, their capital ratios might be a, be required to be a little bit higher than originally expected. So maybe you might see a modest change in some earnings estimates, but we think the story remains intact, which is you're going to see lots of dividend increases. You're going to see lots of buybacks. And we think these stocks are very well positioned to go into the quarterly earnings in a couple of weeks. Do you think the big banks will continue their sort of dominant position, not, not in terms of market share, but in terms of stock market performance over the uh, midsize, the regionals? Uh, and how do you explain that? Well, they have less commercial real estate, and they also have exposure to investment banking. Investment banking has been bouncing off the bottom in terms of revenue opportunity. Like, for example, this quarter, we think Goldman's going to be up 15 to 20 percent year over year. But their run rate is only 75 percent of what we think a typical run rate would be. So the big banks tend to have less commercial real estate. They have more exposure to the business that's going to come first, which we think is investment banking. And they also tend to be a little bit more profitable. So we have been focused on the bigger banks and we Karen. will continue. Karen. Hi, um, thanks for being on. So. Um, I think this, as you suggested, wasn't really a surprise. What are you expecting, though, from Basel Endgame? Would that be a bigger deal here for these banks? So Basel Endgame, we think, is going to be adjusted. The, the Fed chairman has said that. Uh, and we think the banks have already been building capital to get ready for it. So, so we think there's a very good chance that when you see it, it will be treated as good news rather than bad news, because what was originally proposed was just a little bit too strong, we think, and would have really, I think, dinged the profitability of the banks and maybe even changed what financial services was going to look like in the next five to 10 years. Steve? T Tom, we always seem to be fighting the last war. So when we look at the stress tests, what do you think that, that they should be doing? Because we thought we had everything in order and then we had the regionals uh, really hit a wall. What do you think that they're not doing that they should be doing because this script was written a decade and, and change ago? Thank you for that question, because the biggest missed opportunity is deposit insurance reform, which is the banks that failed last year had plenty of capital. It's just that deposit depositors got nervous about the bond losses. What we really need is we need the mid that we need to raise and take the FDIC suggestion and raise deposit insurance for small businesses so small businesses can keep their deposits in regional banks and not feel like when they're stressed, they need to go find a too big to fail bank. It's going to change what the industry looks like in 10 years if it isn't addressed it soon. I think the capital situation has been dealt with, which you can see even in the stress test. Now it's time to focus on deposit insurance reform.